we have a disc here with an interesting looking indent. It is slightly recessed on the left and right side, but at the front and the back, it blends smoothly with the rest of the disc. This was a problem posted on the forum. Let's take a look at a few approaches. I will start with a disc. This is a simple revolve of a profile consisting of an arc joined with two straight lines. I have a sketch on the top plane that defines the shape of the indent. This consists of four arcs. I'm going to start with a relatively simple and quick way. Go to Modify, Split Face. Select the top face of the disk to split. For splitting tool, click on the Select box and select the sketch. We do not actually need to delete this split face. The split face was done so that we can have these two edges to serve as our profiles for lofting. I am going to change the color of the body so that we can see the lofted surface better. Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Loft. We shall loft from this edge to this edge. Set both continuity options to curvature and align to a surface. At this moment, the lofted surface closely matches up with the original revolved face. In order to make it dug down slightly, we can change the tangency. Select Profile 1. We can either drag on the arrow or change the value in the dialog. Select Profile 2 and do the same. By doing this, we have made the lofted surface slightly under the revolved face. There is a limit to how much this can be adjusted before it fails. Activate the Solid tab and begin an extrude. We are going to use the same profile that was used to perform the split face earlier. It doesn't matter that our sketch is below the lofted surface. For the start condition, select Object. Let's hide the solid body and select the lofted surface. The extruder cut will use this surface as a starting point and cut everything that is above it. Bring back the solid body. We can set the extent to all, so that it cuts through to the top face. Let's hide the lofted surface body. This method only allows for a relatively small recess depth. In order to have more control over the path of the loft, we can create a spline that would serve as the rail. So let's go back to the point in the timeline after we did the split face. From here, perform a sketch on the right plane. We will be creating a spline that snaps to these two edges. We want the spline to be curvature continuous with the revolved face. In order to do that, we need projected lines off the revolved face. Go to Create, Project Include, Intersect. If we hover over the revolved face, we can see a preview of two red lines. 
These lines are a result of the intersection between a sketch plane and a revolved face. Select the face and confirm. Click on Look at in the sketch palette to return to a view normal to the sketch plane. Let's hide the body for the moment. Begin a control point spine. After some experimenting, I found that creating four control frame points work best in this scenario. Do experiment with this yourself. Snap one end of the spine to this point. Drop the following four points. And end the spline on this point. Next, I will make the control points symmetrical about the front plane. Let's show the origin. Begin a symmetry constraint. Select one of the control points, followed by the opposite control point, and lastly, the y axis. Do the same for these pair of points. Begin the curvature constraint and impose this constraint between the spline and the projected line. Since this spline is symmetrical, the other side would also be curvature continuous. Let's show the body and adjust the control frame so that the spline ducks below the body. Define the control frames fully. Confirm the sketch. Let's roll the timeline forward. Go back into the loft. Click on the arrow for rails and add the spline as a rail. Confirm and allow the model to regenerate. So this method gives you more control over the depth of the recess. The following method is adapted from a response in the forum given by the Cat Risperer. Instead of using an arc to revolve, we will start with an ellipse on the front plane. To create the profile for a revolve, I will add these two lines. Perform a revolve with this profile. In this workflow, the indented surface is treated as a revolve also, using a spline that is slightly below the elliptical face. So let's begin a sketch on the same plane as an ellipse. Show the ellipse and hide the body. Begin a fit point spline. Snap one end to the vertical axis. Drop a point in the middle and end the spline on the ellipse. Begin the horizontal vertical constraint and make this spline handle horizontal. This is to ensure that the revolved face will be smooth at the center. For the other end, I will impose a curvature constraint between the spline and the ellipse.
Confirm the sketch. Activate the Surface tab and create a revolved surface using this plane. Next, I will begin a sketch on the top plane. And sketch out two arcs that snap to the outer edges of this new revolved surface. So we now have a profile from which to perform the extrude. This extrude will be the same as in the previous methods. Activate the solid tab. Begin the extrude command with this profile. Select the object in the start option and select the revolved surface created by the spline. Let's show the solid body. For extent, set to all. 